practical tips can you give someone for setting up that dieting phase? So I'd, I'd start off, as I kind of mentioned, like the discovery phase of it, it's obviously going to also depend on their like um, like dieting background, whether they have tried to lose weight previously or if they haven't. Um, mainly because people who have will have some preconceptions of what dieting looks like. Um, some people who haven't ever done it before, it's the first time doing it. Often you can get into it like much faster because they don't they're not like emotionally tied to any kind of diet or, or anything like that. You can kind of just crack on and educate as you go. Um, but for most people, they have realistically anyone well a lot of people looking for fat loss I actually don't think I've ever had a female fat loss client who hasn't tried to lose fat before I've definitely had guys but but definitely not females so um understanding where they've come from I think is going to be a really helpful place to start so so for you analyzing what potential biases you might have if you're about to start a new phase like what have you done before what's what worked what didn't work why did it work why did it not work so you're going into it in a in a good I guess a non-biased approach um so even if it's like a week of just doing what you're doing now and, and, and seeing, but also just having a little bit of awareness and starting to understand why. And, and that's a big part of how we do things is I will start to unpick the why with, with a client of maybe they, they do X habit at X time. Like, is it an actual habit? Is it um, like an emotional thing? Is it for, for all these other reasons? And understanding the why, then it might put you in a better place to understand where we can do things differently and, and, and give you some scope to, to tweak things um because if we just throw into like right right this is why this is where I am now I've calculated my calories I'm just going to crack on there's a solid chance that things might not go the way you you want them to because you're kind of just putting a plaster on it you're putting a band-aid on of on kind of unhelpful habits so if you start to learn what those unhelpful habits are you're in a better position to to tweak them and then ultimately make it sustainable so I'd start off with discovery phase um I say kind of monitoring is doing it from a probably reflective practice that's generally how I monitor stuff with clients um and asking them like what what's going to be a helpful place to start but and and again each individual will have previous experiences where maybe they are they don't like stepping on the scale maybe they're happy to um and so figuring out what's what's best for you but doing more of a holistic approach like how how stressed do I feel how is this impacting my my ability to just like live life and doing monitoring through a, like a reflective practice whether that's a weekly thing like almost imagine like you would have a coach whether you do that like journaling on a Sunday or maybe it's a daily practice whatever that looks like um yeah it will be will be super helpful the next part is probably the most underrated part and definitely something I do a lot more now and people are often quite hesitant to do it because it's it's kind of scary but like periodizing fat loss and that could literally be two three four weeks in a deficit in a fat loss phase and then having like a week or a few days whatever that's going to look like for the individual at maintenance that means you particularly if you're someone who is doing multiple things your training output is pretty high it one just first allows you to resaturate glycogen stores so eating carbohydrates so when we're looking at maintenance ideally we want that to come from mainly from carbohydrates to resaturate our glycogen stores to the how we store carbohydrates in our muscles that's going to be helpful from a performance standpoint so it doesn't just start to wind down and training just kind of plateau and start to, to dip so that's helpful it also gives you that psychological break of right, I'm, I'm not dieting but also I guess it's very easy for that to be like well it can be like a fuck it week um to be fair I generally don't actually see that that much but I think it's probably because they have the buy-in of right this is how we're going to do things so just holding yourself accountable like right I know I'm going to eat a little bit more but it's not just me like right I'm going to go eat out every single day um and so that that's helpful from that like just a diet break point of view potentially metabolic adaptation but probably it's not going to have a, a massive um role to play um but also if we're looking for this kind of sustainable approach having a week at maintenance means you know what maintenance is going to feel like because I'm sure you see it all the time with clients like people who have yo-yo dieted before maybe they're with another coach they did really well they lost loads of weight and then like they're with you now because they kind of put it all back on so we obviously want to be able to, to avoid that so having a week at maintenance like throughout the whole process allows them to realize right this is what maintenance feels like this is what it's like to not be in a calorie deficit and to have a little bit more food available to me um and that's a hugely helpful thing from a sustainability point of view but probably one of the most underrated things that I don't think a lot of people will, will do again because it's just a scary thing and it, it seems like you're moving further away from your goal but like you're just putting the brake on real like you're not you're not moving further away it's just pausing it a little yeah. bit which ultimately in the long run is going to be helpful to move forward more. 